Hi beauty fam. I thought I would do a video showing you all of the products that I picked from my recent declutter to project pan this year. Right now it's spilling out of a an old Chanel box, but I'm going to attempt to lift it up and show you what it Okay, so that didn't work. I think I need to find a bigger box or a basket. So these are all the items I am going to try to project pan this year. I went through a declutter video and I'll link it above or below. And as I was decluttering, I was really pulling aside items that I was thinking, gosh, I really either like this is going to expire and get old soon or like I really need to use this more. We start with the one success story that I already a uh, project panned and you know you got to set yourself up for success. I find the easiest products to project pan are actually powders. I have four pressed powders in my collection, two of which are finishing powders, two of which are blurring powders. One is a finishing powder, one's illuminating. So project panning and I'm doing really well already because I know it's panned <laughs> and some of you know um, this already. This is um, a really easy one to pan and actually it started to hit pan already. This is this Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish in Medium 2. It is already panned and been like one of my holy grails of of finishing powder, not of the powders, general pressed powders. I generally use loose, but I pull for this once in a while because it has a nice blurring effect. And the second one, this Hummingbird Chantecaille Blurring Powder. So you can see already it's panned. And I am going to finish that because, you know, I'm going to use my products. So those are two that are on the project pan. <laughs> Sighing because I think I was too ambitious, but I'm going to try. I have goals. Next products that I'm trying to project pan are my foundations. This is the Chanel Water Fresh Tint La Beige. Uh, um, it's like the, it's the foundation that's uh, suspended in water. This is my holy grail for the summer. I, I love this foundation. And I love it too when I'm feeling like, dehydrated because we're in winter. It can be used as a primer alone. I just think this is probably one of my most used and loved foundations in my entire collection. I, I what I'm going to try to do is so it's already panned like all of it's gone I think almost yeah so um, but I can show you what it looks like if you're not familiar. Um, again I have medium plus and it's just this really light it's not even I know they say it's a tint but I think it's an even lighter than a tint but there's some little balls of foundation in there that just when I want a light day just like slightly even out my tone and not feel like I'm wearing makeup I will reach for this so I will hold off on replacing this until the summer because once June July hits I will be wanting to use this because I don't like to use a lot of heavy foundation in the summer that is project panned already so yay <laughs> the other foundations that I want to project pan are the Suku cream foundation and I have this in my winter shade 35 and this is probably one of my favorite foundations in my collection I think it's a beautiful beautiful foundation like every picture that I've seen or filming that I've done I'm just I have to I'm like what am I wearing and I, it's always this that it just not only goes on beautifully it actually wears down beautifully throughout the day and again, I think it has to do with that Japanese technology. There's some gel in there, some magic unicorn stuff in there that I just, this is why I love Japanese um, makeup, particularly foundation. I think Koreans got it on lock for skincare and the Japanese got it on lock for foundations and a lot of other beauty products. So there's something in the technology just, I have to use this up because I think it's coming up on the expiration date. Yep, it's supposed to be 12 months. I'm like really pushing it. And the, this is the thing about this foundation. It's in a jar, so I'm worried about it expiring soon. Also, it's what's hard about this foundation is that a little goes a long way. So I've been using this, but it's it, it lasts a long time. So I just know, I remember this being a little bit pricier of a product and I don't want this to go to waste because it's just beautiful. The other products I have, which are like lower on my list of getting through for panning, because I know if I don't finish this before it goes bad, I will actually feel bad. Uh, it will, I'll be mad at myself and feel bad about it. These ones, however, I don't feel as bad if they, if I don't pan them as aggressively or if they go bad, just because they weren't my favorite. When I was doing my 
declutter, I was also tracking how old these products were. So I actually love this. Again, another Japanese product, Kogendo, and it's the moisture foundation. And it's interesting. I, I find this is almost like, it's not a tint, but it's almost like a gel tint, a little heavier than that. And what I love about this is that it's like a light, it does feel like I'm putting on moisturizer, like skincare on my face. And the great thing about this, and you have to be okay with it, is that I find this works better with finger or putting on my face with my fingers. It doesn't look as nice when I put on a brush or a beauty blender. Actually, you know that I don't use beauty, really use beauty blenders on my channel. When I'm in a really big hurry, and this is actually, I try to I leave either, I'm, this is either in my go bag for makeup or I leave it out, but I'm starting to leave it out um, on my top shelf here because I'm starting to use this more. It's, I love using this and because it's so quick because it's basically as if I'm putting skincare, like face cream, and it covers any, like, I would say it's a light application for blemishes. It's really great. It's like a light where this is like a buildable medium. This will definitely cover a lot more. And so that's also my project pan. And also the clock is ticking on this. I think I have like maybe six months before it expires, but I will stretch it because it's in a tube and I pay for it. So the last ones are going to expire this year and they're actually not my favorite. This is why I'm also pausing on buying the Chanel number no. one, the new foundation, because again, I have a total of I just finished one Chanel foundation. I have one that's good for another two years, but then I have these three that I need to finish up. And so trying to be good about like, you know, again, FOMO, not having FOMO and trying to like, if I want something, just really looking at my collection of like, do I have something like that? Do I really need it? I do, what else do I need to finish up? So I bought these on a really like rash, like I shouldn't have bought these, but I was on a Chanel kit and I really wanted to try them. So why these are not as my favorite, um, I had read the Vita Lumiere was a fan favorite of people who love Chanel. And I had also heard that they might discontinue or reformulate it. So I was a little bit like, that's why I ended up getting it. And I don't think that happened. This reminds me of the same vibe of like a creamy foundation. So super emollient. I think if you're someone with aging skin concerns, have a lot of wrinkles, that need a lot of hydration. I think this is kind of like who they're marketing it towards. Similar to this, it's like super hydrating. This wears down beautiful and it's hydrating, but this is like, it's almost like this is a little bit too oily for me. And it's a moisture rich, radiant sunscreen fluid makeup. It's pretty heavy. I think that's why I don't really get on with it. Plus it has a smell. It's got that Chanel smell, which I'm not keen on. I Chanel puts like their perfume and everything. And I, I just wish they didn't do that, but you know, luxury beauties are gonna do what they're gonna do. So before I buy another one of these for summer, I wanna use up these skin tints. So these are definitely the skin tints. This is a matte one. This is Ultra La Tente Velvet, the Blurring Smooth Effect Foundation Velvet Matte Finish. Also has SPF 15. This is actually really is blurring, but it's not drying matte. So I am okay with it. So if I want a matte foundation, I'm gonna reach for this. This is the Vita Lumiere Aqua uh, Skin Tint. Again, this is ultra light skin perfecting sunscreen makeup. It has SPF 15. Um, again, it's really strong in the Chanel smell, that perfume, and that's why I I'm not I'm not going to be mad at myself if I don't finish these, because really the I'm going to be honest with myself of like I probably shouldn't have bought these, and I should have just bought one first. And knowing that Chanel puts a lot of perfume in their skincare and foundations, which really I don't like. It's the thing about like if it's on your face. It does a lot of times it doesn't dissipate and there's something about this skin tint i like this the best out of all of these but the skin tint the perfume smell on there is really strong because i'm trying to, to project pan i'm gonna try to project pan those foundations so wish me luck so i have five of those the next products are complexion products again and they are four concealers i struggle with these because there's something about them that i don't like again oh, unpopular that opinion here. that i know so, people love these two this here's is the thing the about this i love that it's skin corrector by dior and then they shade and illuminate by tom ford it's creamy but it looks terrible terrible under my eyes i've tried different ways to wear this and it ages my eyelids. And I just maybe have to be resigned that this formula is not good for my under eyes. Where 
I've found to use this a formula is actually used use this concealer as my go-to Dior foundation. So I've actually used this all over and then just made sure my skin was really emollient and skin prep was on point. And it actually works really well as a foundation for me because this is my exact shade. I'm still kind of like in the testing phase of like, if I can use Project Pan this and use it as a foundation, I will without it breaking up. But if I start to see acne, it's gone. It's This is in my Project Pan because um, <laughs> this is like, two months still that I'm still undecided about this. It's a stupid expensive <laughs> price concealer. It's ridiculous. I don't even, I got this on sale thankfully. And again, this is like the shade illuminate foundation. It's not as bad when it works well, it works well. And when it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't cover up the darkness under my circles. So that's one thing. And it can't, I can't use too much of it because then it starts to, there's like little light particles in there that if I put too much, it starts to cake up. And I think that's the trick of like, I, I don't know if this is a person, like a friendly for people with a lot of wrinkles. And I have a lot of makeup on today. So you can see like when I do this, I have wrinkles. I'm putting that in my project pan because I need to decide whether or not this is a good concealer for me. So let me swatch this for you. This is 3W1 and this is the shade and illuminate concealer. So it's a bit more peachy. And this is this is why I don't like it too, because it, it's, it gets a dead on match for my skin tone. It doesn't hide my circles. This isn't emollient and pigmented enough to cover my dark circles, but I'm still undecided about that. We'll see. So the next two are cream sticks. And I really tried to like these. So I have the Clay de Peau old formula concealer stick and buff and I'll swatch that for you up here so again it's more of a dead-on match and they always like people say oh it's creamy it's creamy it's not dry it's dry <laughs> it's dry <laughs> it's dry I mean I have to really make sure my under eye is really hydrated for me to use this now what's a bummer is actually I bought this because I wanted to use this to spot conceal on my face. So when I had like areas like here just for brightening or hyper pigmentation, this breaks me out. There's something in this formula that anytime I put it, if I put this anywhere like starting lower down here, I start to get acne. So there's something about this that I they might say it's comedogenic, not comedogenic, but for me, no. There's something that causes acne for, for me. So I cannot use this as a face concealer. Now, I find this like way too dry for my under eye, but I'm gonna try to use it because I paid for it. <laughs> so I just might have to trick myself to like hydrate my eyes more and then maybe spots conceal. Or the other thought I had for this was using this as a primer on my, over my, for my, for my lids. And so because the, this didn't work, this clay de, po, clay de po didn't work, I was like, okay, maybe a Shantikai will work because it's a clean beauty and I don't break out with these. So it's true. I didn't break out with this and I got this in the shade ooh, five. I don't break out with this, but it's hella dry. <laughs> this is even drier than the clay de peau. Can you see that? And this is why I don't like, I don't like stick like concealers and I don't get on with stick foundation. There's something about it. I don't know what it is. It just something about, I think it's just like, doesn't have enough slip on it. Okay. So that's actually a better match. That's almost too, it's like a peachy undertone. Um, I don't know. This is okay. I just don't reach for anything. It's just, it's just, again, it's like that stick foundation or stick concealer. I just might try to use it again up here. It doesn't look really pretty for the under eye concealer because it's too dry. I think I will try to do this for con spot concealing. Um, in fact, why don't I try it right now? So this is what, I, what I'm going to do is like try to warm it up with my finger here and then try to just set it down here. Okay, that's not so bad. So yeah, that worked. And then I might do it around here. And it might be best just if I just use my fingers, I think. What I'm finding is that when I use a brush, it's just like dries up again because it's just so dry. It like gets absorbed into the brush. Every day I will pull for lip oils and especially before I do, right before I do my makeup. So lip oils, I've been using more than lip balm 
just because sometimes they're just really pretty to use and some of them, this is really light on me so this doesn't show up this is the one I use the most for hydrating my lips and it's just really pretty love that so I definitely will probably end up panning them halfway through and this, these are the Viseart lip oils and I'm pretty picky about my lip oils the only lip oils that I have found that I like are Viseart and then Merit Beauty this is Beignet this is like this like nudie brown looks really pretty on my lips that love that color and I pulled a Chantecai lip chic in tea rose this is going to expire soon so I have this much left and the reason I don't pull for it that much is that there is a scent there it smells like perfume which I'm really bummed about because Chantecai is supposed to be a clean beauty brand but maybe they put their own fragrance in there but it's so pretty I just love this balm formula it's my favorite I'll um, actually I have two favorites for balm formulas. This minus the smell. And this is not my favorite because of the smell. But I want to use that up. That's tea rose. And it's a beautiful like everyday color. I am really loving the Victoria Beckham Posh lipsticks. And I have this in fringe. And this is like this really beautiful brown color. Very balmy. Love that color. It's not as emollient as you can see. I think the balm is more emollient. <clears throat> I love the formula of how this feels more of the Chantecai lip chic, but I hate the smell. <laughs> Chantecai, if you're listening, don't put perfume in there. It's terrible. I don't like it. Please, if you're clean beauty, don't put perfume. Victoria Beckham, also clean luxury beauty. They don't perfume. So, you know, I'm leaning on getting, I, I haven't bought another little lip chics, even though I love the formula, how it feels more than this, because it's more emollient, but I won't, will not buy another of this lip chic because of the smell the perfume I just won't do it so listen if you're listening Shanta guy Victoria Beckham I will probably pick up another color because this is a little bit too deep this is more wintry and I might pick up I think Pose is kind of like that kind of everyday kind of mauvey rose color this kind of will probably like this that will be you know it's scent free two um lipsticks that for sure this is going to expire soon yep this is the Central Park Bond number no. nine lipstick and I love this formula. And it's the only Bond number no. nine, only Bond number no. nine lipstick I own, just because their PR for colors online are terrible. I can't figure out what colors are gonna be tan person friendly. So this is a really beautiful color on my skin tone. Just like this a brownie, brown, brick red. Um, you can see that. I love it. It's the formula of these are so great. I wish these were in other places so that you could test them out because I just don't every place that there's just not very good swatches of this and not very many people buy it. So it's hard to figure out what color is going to be good for me. But this is going to expire. And I don't have the packaging for this because I'm not really into luxury like the packaging of it. Actually, it's too heavy. And I don't like things that are not functional. That means like form follows function. Any of you art history, art buffs out there or architecture, um, the the packaging on it is just not my favorite. It's just me, it's just, just a preference thing. Uh, I just don't like when things are super heavy and there's no way I would put that in my bag or purse because it adds weight and I'm someone that travels. So this, I kept it in here. It's a cardboard and that's fine with me. Last lipstick that I'm trying to project pan is my Lisa Eldridge Rose Official. Now there's no pending due date on this of it expiring. I just want to really use up the lipstick I have. So I think I've been doing a really good job of this. And it's like a really kind of everyday color. Let me just swatch that for you. It's similar to that. What I do find is that this is more emollient, so it's like a balm. This does tend to dry down after a while. Like my lips are not super hydrated after an hour or two so like I have to reapply and that's not a bad thing it's just you know I do think this is a better formula but it minus the perfume <laughs> but I like the color on this but the wear down time is just not very long Tom Ford lip gloss in Ravish and I've had this probably longer than I should it's, it hasn't turned yet but you know I'm pushing the envelope so this is Ravish and it's just really beautiful I would get more Tom Ford lip glosses, but I think they are grossly overpriced. Really beautiful peach color. Actually, you know, I have a Chanel lip gloss on, but let me add this just so you can see. It's a little like, like a peachy color. 
I love the doe foot. It's super soft. And it does like some give. Do you see it? Like it's, it glides. Oh, such a pretty color. So I'm going to try to project pan that this year. So just love that color. Did pick one bronzer. This is my holy grail of bronzers. And you can see I'm starting to hit pan already. This is Gold Dust of Tom Ford. And let me see if I can paint swatch it for you here. This is really beautiful bronze color. It was really tan person friendly. Love this. So I think some of it fell out. Okay, so the pan just got bigger. <laughs> it was not on purpose. So yeah, I'm going to close. It. Oh, there it is. Did a huge chunk of it just fell. Do you see that? So I have to be very careful about that. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> so I will be being very careful about that. So trying to project pan of uh, the Chantecaille Joy or Wild Horse. This is a great <clears throat> pink color and I really enjoy the Chantecaille blushes. I just think they're they're small but they pack a punch and I think they're what I do like about it is that they tend to be just really a nice high quality matte. The color range isn't as diverse so I think it defaults on people that are light skinned so that's something to note. This is like my perfect like pink in the front. You see that's like really pretty pink in the front. Blush, of course I put too much but I just wanted to show you what that looks like and I do like to put it in the front. A little goes a long way as you've seen so I'm going to try to project pen that one. This is reaching its expiration date. This is the Tom Ford Inhibition 06 blush. I don't think they make these anymore. This is the old formula of the blushes which everyone really loves and if you know Tom Ford and you have this this um, formula from Tom Ford you know what it mean like you can use this every day and it doesn't I don't I don't know what's in here that it's I'm not hitting pan like before my collection grew to what it was it is today I actually only had two blushes I had actually the OG I had Chanel Malice and then this one and let me just show you what that looks like so it's a it's similar to the one on top but it's more coral do you see that and warmer so i don't know what magic's in here other than i would wear this every day and i'm still not panning it and quite honestly this is probably past its expiration date but this is actually one of my favorite formula of blushes is the tom ford old one and i'm not going to get rid of it now but i'm going to try to pan it this year um, and I do like it more than the new reformulation just because there's something about this formula that's really beautiful the way it goes on. And I do like the tones that they had in the older collection than the new ones. The other ones, the new ones are just all peach in my opinion. Whereas this from these blushes, they actually were a little bit more diverse and more um, inclusive other of people's skin tones. Last... Uh, blush slash highlighter is this this one here now this is the Chantecaille Manta Ray Radiance Chic 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 and Highlight Duel in Coral and I've had this a while and it's time that I either start using it and panning it or it's gonna go or just I might keep it just for collector's sake because I'm, I'm pretty sure this is either sold out or it's hard to get so I go hard on this um, coral shade in the summer and I just love this baked gelée formula. So this is the coral blush that I'll use a lot in the summer. And then here's that highlighter down here. And you can just see with a tan skin, this is beautiful. And I'm a fan of the baked gelée, just it, it works really well with the texture on my skin. Highlighter I'm going to try to pan this year is this La Mer's uh, Glow Highlighter duo illuminator and this i think was limited edition unfortunately the, it sold out which i'm glad they don't have a scent in there so it was interesting they only made a couple of these like there's only available for a, a little limited of time and then they don't make them anymore and i don't believe la mer has any more highlighters so this side here it has a cover on the left is the cream side do you see that I'll kind of show you there. So that could be itself a highlighter. It's just like a balm. Do you see that? And then the other side is the like the pinky peach highlighter. 
this one here, which is down here. And it's very similar to this one, but it's more pink. You see that? And then when you combine them together, because you're supposed to put the balm down first and then the highlighter, Let's see if I can do that. It just like amps up the look. It's just really beautiful. You see that? Definitely more pink. But the finish on it is just beautiful. I actually want to do some of that now. Do some of this here. You can see. And I do have some highlighter down already. That Chanel or Ivoire liquid highlight. But I want you to see what this looks like. I'm going to go into that so you can see. It's like the prettiest shade of pink. And it's such a shame they don't make this anymore. I wish they came out. I'm hoping they come out with another formula because this is actually one of my favorite formulas of highlighter. I just love the cream. Um, I usually don't like cream. Like I think like Natasha Donana does something like that with a cream highlighter and then a powder. I don't like her formula for a highlighter. That's just me. It shows a lot of my texture. And La Mer is like a different demographic. It's for older women. Ends up really beautiful on the skin. Two eyeshadow like one and done's like in cream pots. So I'm going to try to Project Pan, the Chantecai Mermaid Eye Colors, and Starfish and Copper. These are probably my favorite cream pots out of all the cream pots I have. So this is Starfish, and then this is Copper. So Starfish and Copper. And there's something about the way they lay and the way you can lay it down and buffs out. It's just really beautiful on the skin. It has to do with the formula. So for example, I have Tom Ford in here too, the cream blushers. These are the only formula that I found that does not crease on my hooded aging lids. And so it doesn't crease, but also like as you buff it out, there's like a gradation effect. Can you see that? There's like a little bit of orange in there for this one up here. And it's just beautiful. I mean, one and done's I've reached for these before. The thing to note about cream products is that they think they have a faster shelf life because it's cream. And the other one I'm going to try to project pan is this Tom Ford Cream Duo and Powder Eye Color and Golden Peach. Now, back in the day before my collection got huge, this was actually one of my Holy Grail products. And then I recently used it and actually I found that I did not like it as much. And I think it has to do with a formula that this it's like very putty-like. So here, I'm going to show you. Can You can really indent there. I think it's too putty-like that what I don't like about it anymore is that it does tend to crease on my eyelids. So I have to really prep my eyelids in order for this to work. These are best in my... You can use a brush or your fingers with these. It's best with uh, um, using my fingers because of just the impact. So can you see how pretty that is? It's just love. I just love that color. I haven't found a dupe for this. And then, so it comes with a cap that you want to keep. Do not throw that away because that keeps it fresh. So I think it has to do with the mechanism. I think it's it, this dry. This gets dry faster than the other products I have. And then it has this glitter topper that is so pretty. And I'm going to put it next to it so you can see what it looks like alone. Okay, that's alone. And then now I'm going to put it on top of this. Can you see how pretty that is? Just love it, especially in the summer. So that's my jam. This in the summer, I would use a lot. You can, I even use it now. I used it this week. My favorite one in Dawn's for cream shadows, but definitely a favorite in the summer, but it's quickly getting replaced by the awesomeness of Phytosurgeons. So it's kind of a similar vibe of Phytosurgeons. It's like, they have really nice colors and it's fresh. And yeah, I've been reaching for those. So. I'm gonna try to project pan that because I bought it. I use Chantecai Luminescent Eyeshade, and this is Cheetah, and this is like the perfect inner corner highlight for me. So where else can I put it? Um, I'm gonna put it here, but this can be a one and done too. And if you wet these, these are just so pretty. Definitely overpriced, I would say. And so if you can get these like on sale, then it's worth it. I found the other Viseart, Viseart lip oil. So I have this in Fleur, which is like this mauve color. So I gotta, I gotta use these. 
One blush palette in here I want to show you, and I'm going to try to project pan it, and it's the Suku, 10, Suku 101 blush palette, this one. And it's my favorite blush palette of theirs. I didn't like 102 so much, but this one I love. I just love the colors on here. This is like the purple fuchsia hues. These ones will look how pretty that is. And then they have orange, which is totally my jam. Beautiful colors. And I would say that these are not as good as like the single Sukus, but I mean, the colors are for me are, they just speak to me. They just look really well on my skin tone. So I don't think I'll have a problem project panning those. Or cheek product I need to do, and it's these. So these are the Kira Weiss cream shadows. And these are probably my favorite and probably my only favorite at this point of cream cream blushes. I am not a fan of cream blushes. Generally, they don't last on me very well because I just have oily skin. Also, I find them kind of messy. I'm like looking at this now that like, like stuff has gotten on them. So it probably would help if I actually got it in the original container, but I ended up getting these just singles without the container because I had Z palettes. So these are wonderful. Above and beyond that beautiful color. Okay, above and beyond, and this is Sun Touched. Yeah, oops, starting to, well, I did, that just ended up a mess. So <laughs> you can see it, definitely have a type, it's coral and oranges. I do love using these more in the summer. Uh, and again, the thing with cream products, as you know, uh, they do have a shelf life. So this is 12 months. It's getting up on there. Hands down, this is the best cream blush, in my opinion. I don't know what it is about the formula. Powdered blushes still last longer on me. However, these last the longest and have the most color impact on me without looking garish. There's something about the color formulation that just look really pretty in here. I'm just going to go ahead and just show you some of these. I mean, look how pretty that is. And what I will, what, well, my routine will be is that I put the brighter color in front and then the not as bright color here. So sorry, the brighter color in the back and the not as bright in the, in the front. Um, now I have to even out my face. So, and they just spread really beautifully. I found that with cream products, it tends to lift up a lot of my base. But this is not so with this product. Here Weiss, hands down, is like my favorite cream blushes. And every cream blush product I tried after this has been like, has failed. Like this is the most beautiful cream blush that I've I've um, used. I'm wanting to try the Fido Surgeons cream blushes. But again, I have so much makeup. I Again, I'm on a low buy, no buy right now. So unless there's some reason, like compelling reason for me to get new products, like there's no way I'm going to, I got to finish this this year. So unless it's like extremely on sale or someone gives it to me, I'm not going to get another cream blush. So, cause these babies got to go first. Eyeshadow palettes that I want to project pan and I'm not going to swatch these for you. I'm just going to show them to you visually so you can see where I am at these. Charlotte Tilbury instant eye palette. This is definitely coming up on its shelf life. And this is like an everyday pretty nude pink. I don't reach for those. Those are too bright, but I think the rest of these are like great daytime pinky neutrals. I love this palette, but it's it's getting old. Soft Cashmere by Dior. This is a beautiful palette. Actually, I think that's probably up there with my favorite palettes for Dior. What I don't like about these palettes, the only thing I don't like is that they have a short shelf life. It says that on, on all the Dior ones, it's six months, which really irks me. I know people keep them longer than six months, but I just, I don't know what it is. Like if we're paying $60 for luxury beauty, the shelf life should be longer because of that six month shelf life, because it, it does bother me because you have wonderful products like this that have a shelf life, I believe of, I believe it's like a two year or three years, depending on the Vizzy Art product. These last a long time and they're, the quality never goes down past like maybe two, three years, it'll start to go down. But this is a great long shelf life. So Cashmere palette, I'm gonna try to project pan that. NARS Climax palette, this one, cause I have to have like a grungy green colors palette in my project pan. The Star Aura, 
by Charlotte Tilbury. I want to try to project pan that one. The last one I want on here are my palettes from Sydney Grace, these ones here. And it's not a big deal if I don't pan these this year because I just, I don't want to put it back in my makeup down here because I feel like if I don't put it back up here, then they're not going to be used. So I think these will last more than a year, so I'm not as stressed about that. It for the products I'm going to work on for my project pan this year. I hope that was fun and that maybe it inspired some of you to start pulling and project panning some of your products and reasons why mostly the, um, the reasons why for me will be because literally some of these are expiring pulling out ones that you really love i have a lot of makeup right now but you know uh, for video it looks great <laughs> and as always if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider doing so and then ringing the notification bell and commenting and liking below it really helps out my channel and as always please be very kind to yourself and others and just be you and until i see you in the next video take good care bye